Hello and welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Oni de Guzman. Our topic for today is Basic Concepts of Loans for Grade 11 General Mathematics. At the end of this lesson, the learner will be able to illustrate business and consumer loans as well as distinguish between the business and consumer loans. So let's unlock first some definition of terms. So we have here the business loan. Money lent is specifically for a business purpose. It may be used to start a business or to have a business expansion. While consumer loan, this is money lent to an individual for personal or family purpose. So while collateral is the assets used to secure the loan, it may be real estate or other investments such as okay, title of your land, car, and others. We have the term of the loan, which is known as time to pay the entire loan. To give us more idea about the difference between the business loans as well as consumer loans, so we have here loans are for loans for businesses for business loans, while for the consumer loans, this is entirely for the personal purpose or family purpose. For the business loan, we have, or you may have collateral. Otherwise, for the consumer loans, okay, sometimes you may have collateral or sometimes it is not actually required. For the business loan, also, we do not usually require a guarantor. However, for the consumer loan, requires business owners to sign as guarantor. Next, for the credit report, for the business loan, we need the credit report, income tax returns, and company's financial statement. Well, if you are employee, okay, you may have the credit report, bank statement, income tax return, certificate of employment. Sometimes you are required to submit also employee pay slips. And finally, for the business loans, so the interest rate is usually higher. While for the consumer loans, the term is usually shorter and of course the okay, rate is usually lower. Okay, let's talk about amortization method. So this is the method of paying of two things. First, the principal, and the other one is the interest. So you need to pay this one usually an equal amount at regular intervals. Next one is the mortgage. So this is a loan secured by a collateral that the borrower is obliged to pay as specific terms. Whenever we say collateral, so that is actually assets used to secure the loan. It may be a real estate or other investment such as the title of land or your car. While if we are talking about Chattel mortgage, this is a mortgage on a movable property. A mortgage is a business loan or a consumer loan that is secured with a collateral. Collaterals are assets that can secure a loan. If a borrower cannot pay the loan, the lender has the right to the collateral. So the most common collaterals are real estate properties such as, okay, the title of the land, your house and lot. For business loans, equipment, furniture, and vehicles may be also used as collateral. Usually, the loan is secured by the property bought. If a house and lot is purchased, the purchased house and lot will be used as mortgage property or a collateral. During the term of the loan, the mortgator or the borrower in the mortgage still has the right to possess and use the mortgage property. In the event the mortgator does not make the regular payments on the mortgage, the mortgagee or the lender in the mortgage can repossess the mortgage property. The most common type of mortgage is the fixed rate mortgage wherein the interest remains constant throughout the term of the loan. Let's have the application of basic concepts of loans. So let's have example number one. So Mr. DeGracia borrowed 1 million pesos for the expansion of his business. So the effective rate of the interest is 7%. The loan is to be repaid in full after one year. How much is to be paid after one year? So let's identify first the given. So the present value is 1 million pesos. The rate of interest is 7% or 0 0.07. And n is equal to 1 because that is only compounded once a year. 
and the future value is unknown. So we will use the formula of future value is equal to present value times 1 plus the rate of interest raised to n. Substitute the given values. So we have 1 million times 1 plus 7% raised to 1. So this is equal to 1,070,000 pesos. So therefore, the amount of 1,070,000 pesos must be paid after one year. So let's have example number two. If a house is sold for 3 million and the bank requires 20% down payment, find the amount of the mortgage. So first, let's identify, okay, down payment. So the down payment is equal to down payment rate times the cash price. So that is 20% or that is equal to 0 0.20 times 3 million. So this is equal to 600,000 pesos. Step number two, we want to find out the amount of loan. So here we have the cash price minus the down payment. So we have 3 million minus 600,000 pesos. So therefore the amount of loan is 2,400,000. So thus the mortgage amount is 2,400,000 pesos. Sometimes you were not able to pay off your loan, so that is why you have your outstanding balance. Recall that the outstanding balance of a loan is the amount of the loan at this time. One method to compute the outstanding balance is to get the present value of all the remaining payments, and this method is what we call prospective methods. So from our diagram, so upon paying your okay, payment until K, so the value of the remaining N minus K payment immediately after the K payment. So this is the B sub K. Again, we use the symbol B sub K to denote the outstanding balance after K payments and the P stands for prospective. So let us consider problem number three. Mrs. Santos borrowed some money from a bank that offers an interest rate of 12% compounded monthly. Her monthly amortization for 5 years is 11,122.22 pesos. How much is her uh, outstanding balance after the 12th payment? So first, let's identify the given. The regular payment is 11,122.22. So the interest per year is 12%. However, if you want to find out the interest rate per period, so meaning to say, so annual interest divided by the frequency. The frequency is 12 since this is monthly. So 12% divided by 12. So this is equal to 1% or 0.01. K is equal to 12. Okay, so we have 12 numbers of payment paid. So we have here, okay, so the total number of payments. So that is N. So N is equal to 12 times 5 because there are 12 payments in a year times 5 years, so we have 60 payments. So n minus k, so that is 60 minus 12, so we have only 48. Why? Because since only 48 payments remain, meaning to say we need to pay 48 more. Okay. So we want to find out the present value of 48 future payments since there are 48 payments left. Since we want to find out the outstanding balance, we will use this formula. B sub K is equal to R, the regular payment, times the expression Y minus 1 plus J raised to negative. Okay, that's expression N minus K all over J. Substitute the values. So R is 11,122.22, while our J is equal to 1% or 0 0.01, and N is equal to 60, K is equal to 12. Okay. Using our calculator, the outstanding balance is 422,354.73. So therefore, we can say that the outstanding balance is 422,000 pesos, 354.73. Let's have example number four. Mr. and Mrs. Bautista purchased a house and lot worth 4 million pesos. They paid a down payment of 800,000 pesos. They plan to amortize the loan of 3,200,000 pesos by paying monthly for 20 years. The interest rate is 12% converted monthly. So letter A, 
how much is the monthly payment. So first, let's identify the given. The present value is 3,200,000. M is equal to 12 because it is monthly. So the interest rate per year is 12%. Okay. But if we want to find out the interest per period, since it is monthly, so we divide 12% by 12. So this is equal to 1% or 0 0.01. While the time is equal to 20 years. So the N is equal to M times T. That is 12 times 20 is equal to 240. And we want to find out the regular payment. Recall that we will use the present value is equal to, okay, our regular payment times 1 minus 1 plus J raised to negative N divided by J. So since I want to find out uh, the value of R, so I'll divide both sides of the equation by this expression. So therefore, the R is equal to P divided by the expression 1 minus 1 plus J raised to negative N divided by J. Okay? So R now is equal to 3,200,000 pesos divided by, okay, we substitute the value of J. So then as well as the value of N as well as the J. So R is equal to 35,234.76. Therefore, the monthly payment is 35,234.76. So let's continue with the problem. So this time we want to find out the total interest paid. So again, from the given, so the present value is 3,200,000. So the total N or the number of payments is 240. While your okay, regular payment is 35,234.76. This time, you want to find out the total interest paid. Notice that there are 240 payments of 35,234.76. So if you will multiply that one, so the total payment is 8,456,342.40. However, okay, the principal is only 3,200,000. So if we will subtract this, so the interest amount is the total payments minus the principal. So you will come up with okay, 5,256,342.40. So therefore, the interest amount is 5,256,342.40. Observe that your interest is bigger, quite bigger than your okay, amount, so your loan. So sometimes if you have... okay amortization or amortized loan okay you are paying more interest than the principal so that is why okay if you will observe you only owe three million two hundred thousand but you will pay in total eight million four hundred fifty six thousand okay three hundred forty two point forty so this is almost three times your original loan okay so that ends our disca uh, discussion about the basic concepts of loans. Again, so this is Teacher Oni de Guzman. Do not forget to, so, to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you and have a nice day.